Well, how's it going, everybody? I'm Burhead2, and welcome to, if I was wanting to say it like this, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Pre release on news content, we discussed nothing but geopolitics and the current social political climate. The economy in Nepal has been doing well recently. I sure hope it doesn't affect my investments. Okay, obviously, I kid. This video is really about. Well, it should be fairly obvious. So, enough beating around the bush, let's get into it, starting off with the pre release. If you were to look up Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon trailer or Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon E3 demo, you'd find a fair amount of results. However, I'm not going to cover all of these given that some of them are basically the same thing. Generally speaking, some of them just don't have much to talk about, so I'll only be covering a select few videos. Starting off, we have the E3 2011 trailer. To start off, of course, the game's title. It was originally called Luigi's Mansion 2 in all regions, but the devs apparently got cold feet and somehow lit Dark Moon, North America, and South Korea. The logo got a few changes, some layers were redrawn, as was the two, and the turnbox symbol got moved, enlarged, and colored. I'm gonna stop here at the first one to point out basically everything. That chest is different, it doesn't have tarp over it, why are there bills on the left, the windows have an opaque purple glow, and, of course, this room is not representative of the final game. It's missing... basically everything. Additionally, the coins and gold bars also lack any shininess, so they're basically just a bunch of ugly flat colors, but I'm still missing the obvious. Luigi's health is on the top left, as Luigi takes damage, the heart shrinks, revealing an outline. So... it's the exact same health meter from the first game. <laughs> Besides a few line differences, loose wallpaper is different and the window isn't broken. Anyone who's played Dark Moon showed the placement of everything basically got mirrored in the final game. There's an early treasure chest in place of a door, and when Luigi vacuums the coins, the counter appears with money already on it, which is strange. Speaking of, that chair is positioned funny. Okay, so, again, basically everything's different. The fountain is bigger, square, and has three cheap cheese statues, which themselves are also different. The green mechanisms are on display front and center, the floor is different, being the floor by the fountain, and the carpets are laid on paths. The fish tank seems to lack fish, besides the sea star, which is also different from the final game. The star-shaped gem is also moved, the guy shouldn't appear on the stairs, and has no brain. And, finally, there's no stroll ball mechanism on the door. Oh, and the darker painting is different, and the stroll ball isn't glowing, and the room is missing most of its objects. That should about cover it. <laughs> The floor here is a fair bit different, having extra carpet on the left and lacking the broken tiles of the final. The vent here is also a fair bit different, the fake painting closes by itself, very quickly I might add, and the green just appears laughing. The glow can still be seen through the painting, whereas in the final game, the glossy purple particle can't use the right now effect, it's placed over it. The dark light painting is colored in, but the gem, at least I'm assuming it's the gem, is still in the painting. There's a window at the top that can't be seen in the final, possibly because the camera angle seems to be somewhat raised here. Additionally, some of the objects are missing, and others like the table and mouse hole are moved. <laughs> Anyone who's surprised it was pretty different from the final, raise your hand. I'm seeing a few people. You guys don't pick up my pants quickly, do you? Anyway, the floor is different again, big surprise. That weird... whatever it is is missing, though. The junk at the top left, the room is gone, as is that weird machine in the bottom left. The table gets replaced in the final, and the machine sitting on and the one in the middle of the room will see some changes. There's a board around the chalkboard, the wall isn't cracked, and the blueprints on the floor and the dark level objects seem to be missing. <laughs> What's weird is that there are boards on the door, the gear mechanism is gone, and there's a wardrobe on the left, and the fountains are not spitting water. Weird. <laughs> the poltergeist, now having a brain, gingerly tosses the book at Luigi, which does tan damage. I think it is 20 in the final game. Speaking of damage, both the guys in the final game are with 50 health. Because the piano should be bouncing around, the room doesn't seem to have anything that needs to be dark lighted, and the door has boards on it. For some bizarre reason. <laughs> An obviously early version of the antechamber in the old clockworks. Almost everything is different from the final, but if you want me to say something, you'll see those pillars and the chains attached to them aren't supposed to be there, and the coffee guest is supposed to be in the middle of the room. And it's supposed to be a cutscene.
With that out of the way, it's time to move on gameplay from the E3 2011 demo. I'm butting in here to point out the obvious. This goes down because of the final, as does this power meter. As you'll see in a second, this power surge only does 5 damage. The ghost health is also going down kind of slowly, now that I think about it. things to point out. One, the specific cutscene doesn't exist in the final, two, the key Luigi has the silver despite the one collected earlier being gold, and three, the key gets sucked into the keyhole a la Luigi's Mansion 3 instead of dissolving. <laughs> A pretty big thing to point out here is that most of Egad's dialogue is different. Unfortunately, I haven't committed the document script to memory, and as far as I know, nobody's written down everything Egad says, so I can't cross-reference that. Even if I can tell you the text is different, like the text you're looking at right now, I can't compare it to the final, so you're just going to have to trust me. Anyway, Egad's chat head is bigger, with a different background and border, to compass the text box is smaller. He also popped out without him calling. The table that would be obscured by Egad's massive chat head isn't there, there are some chairs at the end of the hallway, and the table with the bill stack is moved. A mirror is in place of the window with a spiderweb on it, and in the mirror, another window is shown, this time without a spiderweb. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Hope you enjoyed that because we got more E3 demos to cover. This time for E3 2012. However, we have to cover the E3 2012 trailer first. Here we can see that the game, lighting wise, is much closer to the final, but Luigi now has a utility belt, which developers apparently also got cold feet on and eventually removed. It then proceeds to be non existent for the majority of the trailer. <laughs> Obviously, early version of the kitchen area that's part of the family room in the haunted towers. And the other obvious thing here is the cake, the sneaker, and the candle that's supposed to be on the cake still being there, despite the fact the cake exploded. Besides the bonus mission, this room's only visited in mission B4, which, if you recall, ends by introducing the player to sneakers and having you fight a few. So it's a little odd that one is placed here willy nilly. There could be an explanation though. According to the Mario Wiki, the haunted towers were originally the third mansion, and the clock works the second. I don't remember that ever being the case, but I'm not finished going through this stuff yet. Anyway, the table shouldn't be here, and the floor is pretty unbroken here. The alcove with the cake table got a large overhaul in the final to become more ruinous. <laughs> There's a pixel out of camera above the gear mechanism. It's a pretty easy detail to miss by Luigi's hands to the Poltergeist nozzle. Well, it's pretty obvious now. I'm not sure what it is, but there's some extra details on the Poltergust. I'm not even sure it's supposed to be there, but it stays for a surprisingly long amount of time. No! Not only is this a red toad when it should be a blue toad, but there are flowers in the background, and an early chest. And a fish, too. <laughs> this room is very different from the final, but you should be expecting stuff like that by now. Now, the golden green should be shinier or brighter. This could be a technical issue, but I've been purposely avoiding pointing those out. But... Hold on. This should be a boo instead! And the door's missing, and... Where's the gondola? Okay, that was kind of a funky animation. Besides that, the door is missing, the bushes are floating, and it's brighter outside and not raining. <laughs> Despite the stubble device on the door already being active, the green panel is still a dark green that's following Luigi. The panels only turn their face when shining the flashlight on them in the final game. The bars that would have blocked the door are slightly different, there's a chain coming off the generator, and the room is much brighter in general. <laughs> yeah. 
Here are two very small differences. The shoes were moved and the ball at the end of the rope is different. And a small detail is missing right here. The boat hanging off the fish hut is different. In place of people and mountain snow is a safe along with a box. Strangely, purple sparks and a purple light coming out of the polder gust. There's a valve of different design floating off the pipe when it would just have a plant in the final game. The door looks much more ornate and there are tools stuck in the ground. Some of those coins all didn't spawn right away. Hello? <gasps> okay, on to the E3 demos, uh, again. The three demos are based off of A1, C1, and D1, so I'm covering them in that order because it makes the most sense. Hello? I know I said I wasn't going to point out text differences, but I will this time. What I find funny is that here, the game tells you what L and R do, but in the final game, it only tells you what R does. The L button is required in the game, only a few times though, but that means that if you had no imagination whatsoever, you'd be stuck. I find it odd the developers went out of their way to defy common logic by removing something tells you how to use a required function.
differences so far, like Ega calling the DS a device, the map a mini-map, and here it calls the pixelator the Pixel Teleporter, which is the worst name you could come up with. Where's the pizzazz? Ega also says he'll put Luigi on the surface, which if I'm remembering my high school subjects reading classes, means they're underground, which the bunker is not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From here on out, it's just the first demo mission again, so let's move on to the next one. Oh, hi there. You caught me catching my street passing. I, uh, uh well, what, what, you know, when in Rome, you gotta check your street passes. And if you're here at Comic-Con, why not come by the stage? Street pass with me. You might even get Kit as well if he sticks around. And he has stuck around. I'm back. To, <laughs> nice segue, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> to demo uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Um, so this is another game that you guys um, talked about a bit at E3. Yeah, so this is, uh, we're actually showing the E3 version here, but this one was so packed with content, we brought it to Comic-Con. You see we got three different stages. We're gonna look at the third one. I'm not sure how many people have seen this one before. This uh -huh. is sort of a snow level. Okay. Uh, and then we got old uh, Egad, he's back. Wouldn't be Luigi's Mansion without him. Of course. And uh, we're just getting our marching orders here and then we'll be off on our way. So, Luigi's Mansion, one of those games with a real die-hard cult yeah. following. It's interesting just how, like, just how much that game has stood the test of time in terms yeah. of just the ravenous Luigi's Mansion fans. How much? Did, how does this one compare to that one that came out uh, early days on the GameCube? Yeah, so 
Something that's different right away is that you're no longer just exploring one big mansion. Uh -huh. There's multiple mansions now, and it's got sort of more of a, a mission-based approach where you'll go in, you'll do a task, you'll come back out, you'll get another task, you'll go back in. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, you'll go see different areas, but it's not like you're always working your way through the same one mansion. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Luigi fans out there. I mean, there are. you know, a lot of Mario fans, but there's, you know, you know no shortage of Mario games. Um, you know, actually, if you go out over to the show floor, I've seen more Wario and Waluigi <laughs> cosplayers than I've seen Mario and Luigi. Yeah. It's kind of like, it, it, people bring out their uh, Mr. Hyde, I think, yeah, when they go yeah. over there. So here we're getting a look at the stages. Uh, something you'll notice as you go, I mean, he's got the flashlight. Luigi does some really great lighting effects. Mm -hmm. um, if he sort of points it at the camera, you can see some, some glare, some nice reflections here. This is a game, if you want to talk about a game that looks great on the <laughs> Nintendo 3DS XL, uh -huh. this is one that you want to play. We're showing this over uh, at our gaming lounge, and uh, people are really enjoying it on the XL, the larger screens. Plenty of coins in this one as yep. well. It's not just super, new Super Mario Bros. No, no, no. Plenty of coins in this one. Um, so you've got the Poltergust, but this time it's the 5,000. Oh, okay. It's been upgraded. You can, uh, you can suck with it. You can blow out. You've also got the flashlight. Mm -hmm. um, and this time you have a strobe function, which sort of shoots out a burst of light. Uh, and when you encounter a ghost, that will stun him. Okay. Uh, and then you have a real good chance to start uh, sucking away at him. Uh, you can also charge up that strobe, because ordinarily it's just sort of a quick, you know, focused shot. You charge it up. Sometimes you'll end up fighting, you know, multiple ghosts at once. This way you get like almost the whole room, and then you can uh, get going on them. We're also showing. <coughs> We'll see if uh, we, if that comes up here. There's a new function on the flashlight. It's mm -hmm. sort of uh, you'll know it when you see it. Oh, there it is. It's that sort of rainbow-colored um, beam, and uh, the purpose of that is it'll help you see things that aren't necessarily apparent right away in the environment. So if there's a puzzle um, and you're sort of you know wondering what to do, it couldn't hurt to to break out that beam and sort of search around the environment and uh, see what you can uh, sort of get him down a little bit and then uh, come back to finish him off later. There we go. Nice work, Luigi. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> and that's something else that's really great about this game is how they have really made the character of Luigi shine through. Uh -huh. He's very expressive the whole way. Like you can tell, you know, Luigi's not the toughest guy around, so right. he gets very like nervous and frightened at times. Uh, just classic Luigi, as they would say. <laughs> That's what people love about him. Yeah. He's the. Um, sometimes he plays second fiddle to yeah. Mario, but yeah. when he gets a chance to shine, he is his own character. And, and great voice work as well. He is. He is not just does, Mario does, in a doesn't, hat. No, doesn't say a lot, but you know what he's uh, trying to get at when he yeah. does say something. So of the three stages that we're showing, this is uh, you know the snow level that I mentioned. Uh, the first that we had was uh, one of the earlier stages where you don't have the poltergeist, you need to track it down. Um, and the second was more of a, I sort of, I don't know if I would call it like a old west kind of feel, but you're in sort of this dry area in a clock tower. Yeah. Uh, so giving a, a good cross section uh, of what this game has to offer. Well, now his life is very low. He's down to 10 hearts. Uh oh. Uh, so he's going to need to be pretty cautious here. And uh, once you start uh, sucking with the poltergust, you can uh, push uh, buttons on the, on the 3DS. The X button if you want to sort of take a high angle, B button if you want to take a low angle, and that's the same um, with your flashlight as well. So here he's, uh, he's sucked up an object, or he did, and it was sort of stuck in the poltergust because it was too big to get out. Uh, and there are times where you can actually uh, use that to carry objects around. That's, that's often a puzzle mechanic. Grab an object, put it somewhere else. Or there are times where you can also shoot it out. So if we were playing this game with a 3D slider cranked all the way out, what's going to be standing yeah, out Yeah, so you're there? thinking what I'm thinking here. All that snow right. is going to really have an impact. This game has some fantastic 3D, I have to say. Um, and it just overall, the graphics, I, I think, are just outstanding. Like, you can see all the reflections. There's just so much going out on the screen. The models are very detailed. He just got some hearts there. That's good news for us. But um, this is just a fantastic looking game, um, a real showpiece. Oh. Playing, playing a little bit a of hockey. A little right hockey there. reference there, why not? 
I mean, some of the developers are from Canada, so. Of course, yeah. yeah. Gotta represent where yeah. they can. Not a whole lot of hockey in uh, Nintendo's previous games to date. <laughs> so. We had ice hockey. <laughs> that's true, yeah, I mean, that's true. All-time classic. Yeah, like every ghost sort of feels uh, a little bit different too. You know, some of them may look the same, but this guy's outfitted with you know the hockey stick and the helmet, and you know they have as much personality as you know Luigi or Egad as well. So right. that really helps the, the sense of atmosphere as well. All right, so I apologize to you folks who are sending me questions over Twitter. I had the, the Wi-Fi is a little finicky here. It's a very large show. A lot of people trying to log on. We're trying to get it to work. So if you've been desperately sending me questions. It's too popular. Yeah, yeah. it's too popular. Too popular. Exactly. Um, all right, well, Kit, I feel like we've got a pretty good sense yeah. of, uh, you know, of what's going on here with Dark Moon. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, use this as an opportunity to close down. But before I let you go, for real this time, yes. we sort of t teased your escape last time. Yes. But now we'll let you this go. This is the real one. This is the real deal. Uh, Luigi's Mansion, when's it going to be out in stores? It's out this holiday season. So uh, I hope everybody checks it out. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. So uh, that was Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Now it's over to the Konami booth over there on the show floor. Now I do have one more trailer to show you. It's a Japanese overview trailer that I apparently can download in resolution over 360p. At least it makes the 3D experience more authentic. With that being said, the only two things from this I want to show you. But there's some gold spiders up there, and here, even though Luigi flashed the green panel, the monitor thing is still blank. And here's a bonus one, this one was missing its back wall! And that covers everything I felt like looking through. There could be more things to point out in other videos, but I think I've covered basically everything. I doubt there's gonna be too many secrets locked away in the multiplayer trailer. And... Welcome to the part of the video where I admit that, um, I'm kind of stupid. So, when I was getting footage for what you literally just saw, the, uh, multiplayer trailer, I noticed some trailers I didn't find back when I was getting all the trailers and demo footage, which was actually quite a while before I started making this, but I digress. Um, so we're gonna look at those two trailers. Um, they're, like, 3DS conference trailers from Japan, so they're in Japanese. And they're more or less the same thing. Like, the same things happen, and like, you know. But don't be fooled, it's different gameplay between the two, and I think they're different builds. Now, for they're from 2011, so we get to see more of the 2011 build of the game, so that's cool. Um, and I can't really tell which trailer is the earlier one. Um, I'm gonna guess and say it's the longer of the two trailers, but it's a little hard to tell. So. We're going to look through those, obviously, and um, I'm not going to do any narration for this. It's just going to be uh, on-screen notes, so yeah, I, I haven't scripted this part. I might miss a few things. You know, who knows? I I probably miss a few things, but no, let's just take a look at those trailers then, shall we? I mean, I could put this stuff back with the other 2011 stuff, but... I'm not going to because there's other stuff I want to talk about after this, so I'm just going to all lump it here at the end because, well, admitting that I missed something once is better than admitting that I missed something twice. So let's actually go look at those trailers now, shall we?
The other thing to mention is, well, while editing this, I realized I actually can compare the other text to the final text. Come on, don't tell me that's not fun. So, um, well, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to display both the early and final text on screen, but I'm going to read the early text because it's just a lot easier that way. Trust me. So, let's uh, get going with this. Hello again, Luigi. Ready for another task? A powerful paranormal being looks within the mansion. My sensors indicate it spends most of its time listening around in the library. We have to capture it so I can study its weird powers. They intrigue me, son. The library's on the second floor. Use a map to find the way. Got it, young feller? Off you go. Luigi. Hey, it's me, Professor E. Gad. Yet to reach the upper rooms, I reckon you might need a key. It might not be that easy to find it, though. I'm thinking those darned ghosts took it. My research points to those ghosts being able to hide stuff inside themselves. Get your courage up and get the key back from them, youngster. But we don't have all day. Keep moving. Fine work, Luigi. That's one serious to looking at a ghost you just grabbed. See, I knew you could succeed in spite of your inner scaredy cat. Time's on marching on. Bring a specimen back to my bunker, youngster. What are you scared of, Sonny? It's just a few harmless ghosts. Well, a few hundred ghosts. And they're not exactly harmless. But looky here, with my brains and your... Uh... Your... Hmm. We're in a bit of a pickle, aren't we? Well, the only way out of this mess is to recover the Dark Moon. Which means you're going to need some ghost hunting gear, son. But wouldn't you know it, I left my Pultigus 5000 in the mansion. So I'm sending you in after it. Look familiar? This device comes with a map to help you navigate the mansion. It will also allow us to communicate with each other. And it's mighty dark up there, so you'll want this flashlight. Now listen up, youngster. This part's important. Open your mini map. I'm marking an important location there. That's the garage. So you're once you find a way into the mansion. I think that's why I left the Poltergust 5000. You ready, son? I'll zap you the surface with my new pixel teleporter. Let's hope all the pixels make it this time. <laughs> Hold on tight now. Luigi, come in Luigi. You there, young feller? Ah, there you are. I was worried that your batteries might be dead. I'll be calling every now and then to check in on you. You look a little nervous, son. Try loosen up a bit. Tiptoeing about won't get us anywhere. You can run while holding B while walking. Now get going! Ah, you found it! 
good work, Luigi, that there is new and improved Poltergust 5000. Just press LRR to activate it. Why don't you go capture a few ghosts to test it out? Luigi, do you see that green panel next to the door? To open it, all you've got to do is flash it with the stro- Criminy! The Poltergust is missing the stroboscope! We'll be able to open that door without it. Take a look around. I'm sure the ghost hit it somewhere. The stroboscope looks like a little green light bulb. Whoa there, young feller! Don't go flashing yourself with that! The stroboscope is a darn powerful device. Try using it on that green panel next to the door. To use it, press and hold A, then release it to flash. Now that you got the gist of it, go catch those ghosts! <laughs> Just like old times, eh, feller? Yep, you and the Poltergust were made for each other. Let's regroup. I'll bring you back to the safe room. You see that, Luigi? That's where the next Dark Moon piece is. The old clockworks. Yep, this place once produced the finest timepieces ever made. But I closed that after a series of horrific accidents. Anyhow, I'm sure it's perfectly safe. <laughs> My sensor to pinpoint the location of the Dark Moon piece. The top of the clock tower. Exciting, eh? Now, see this convoluted door? You need to get there first. It's the clock tower gate in the main floor. Check your map. So you wanted to wander around aimlessly for a change. You ready, Sonny? Prepare for pixelation! Good job, Luigi. I see you made it to the gate. What in blue blazes? The clock hands are missing! Ho ho! Ho ho! Those ghosts sure are a clever bunch. You see, the clock hands operate the tower gate. And the ghosts figured that out and hid them. Incredible! Well, not for us, of course. It's actually pretty terrible. We will take a strong ghost path with clock hands. I'll scan the area for any powerful paranormal signals. Hold tight. I'll let you know when I find something. Well, I think I found our clock thieves. There's a strong paranormal signal located underground. I reckon it's the ghost who took the clock hands. To get there, we can use an old artifact I read about. If such a thing exists, it's likely in the drafting office. Hop to it, youngster. What you got there, son? Hmm, that must be the old artifact. I'll bring it back so I can take a gander at it. Hold on to your hat. I hope you like snow, son. Because your next destination is the top of a snowy mountain. There's a facility up there that my colleagues were using as a lab. They were studying the minerals in the area or some such. But the ghost scared them away after the dark moon shattered. Here's where it gets interesting. I recently discovered a powerful energy signal in the area. And I reckon it might be the next dark moon piece. Luckily, one of my toad assistants is already stationed up there. He probably knows what's going on, so we need to talk to him. The thing is, he's not responding to my calls. So I need to track him down for me in the chalet. In the meantime, I run some more scans in the area. But with the harsh breath will make it tough to find anything. You ready, son? Here we go! No son of Toad, eh? He better not be in the fishing hut out back. I'm not paying him to catch fish. Well, unless there's some kind of freaky ghost fish. Boy, wouldn't that be something? Unfortunately, none of the footage I could find of this particular demo, which was hard to find in the first place, got past the fishing hut. Like, they never even entered the fishing hut, so they only completed, like, the first third of the mission, so the rest of the text for this mission is unknown to me. But anyway, on to our regularly scheduled video. Up next, we have the unused content. However, there's something I'd like to say before I get into that. As of me saying this, the majority of the documentation of this game's unused content can be found on YouTube videos uploaded by people that aren't me. If my goal is to show as much of the audience's content as I can, which it is, that means a very large part of this video is going to be me re-uploading other people's content, which is something I don't really want to do. No matter how good, bad, or just mediocre the content I upload is, it is at the very least original, if not occasionally derivative. But with that being said, I am still going to do it, but if it's any consolation, there will be credits at the end of the video, links in the description, and probably credits during the video as well. And if you happen to be one of the people I, uh, re-uploaded a video from, uh, please don't be mad at me. So with that out of the way, let's start out with some of the stuff I don't have to plagiarize to show you. Let's start off with something simple, like this convergence plane texture. It has something to do with a convergence plane, but I'm not really sure what the convergence plane is. Either way, this convergence plane must be special. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just plane convergence. There are a few unused abilities, functions, whatever word you want to use. One of them being a first person mode. I'll just... Uh, let the original video do some of the talking for me. Mm. 
Although if I had added my two cents on the subject, I said the developers may have wanted to add the Game Boy Horror scanning feature to this game. Of course, that's just a thing. Of course, that's just a... a hypothesis, so take it with a grain of salt. Here's some kind of dark light thing. Again, the original video says everything I need to say. Except, I'll point out the particle effects in charging a dark light strobo blast. This would probably be a good time to point out if you like what you're currently seeing, links in the description in order for fears. And finally, automatic health regeneration. Those of you who remember anything from back when we were going through the pre-release stuff will recall that when Luigi cleared a room in the 2011 demo, his health was restored. But it works a little bit differently here. It now has a sound effect, and the counter starts out counting slow, but speeds up. In the demo, it does the opposite. There likewise exists a few unused rooms, such as this maze bonus room for the gloomy manor. It looks quite complicated, but it's actually quite simple. The Haunted Towers has two, something called a secret room template, which doesn't even have a floor, and a non-template secret room, which actually does have a floor, and also an E-gate, which crashes the game. It might be worth noting that E-gate doesn't have a strobe panel on it, so it's probably the second in the pair of E-gates, and I assume the reason it crashes the game is because there isn't a first in the pair. Also a bit odd to find E-gates in the Haunted Towers. There's an unused mission of the Gloomy Manor that has something to do with a greenie and a forest ending cutscene, although I don't think it means a whole lot. There's one for the secret mine that has... nothing. And there's even a debug mission! Uh, more on that later. Now, for a game as wordy as this, it's unsurprising there's some unused text. However, it's all pretty boring. There's some build dates for each region the game was released in, ROM, info, most recently used development software, and flags for some debugging functions, none of which can be re-enabled by editing this file. There's also these strings. Now, this one is used by something that is also unused, so we're back at square one. And this line changes to this in the British English localization for some reason. But I do know it's so fancy, it's deserving of a much fancier font. And speaking of text, every line in the game is written at the same speed. However, the game can support other speeds. This isn't even technically unused content, it just straight up is used. So I'm hesitant to call this unused content. It's like saying that Mario's Jump Pie in any Mario game is unused content because it'd be changed to be higher and the game doesn't crash. It's perfectly reasonable for a game to have a variable that controls the speed the text is written at. Although it is a little weird the speed can be changed at a whim and isn't universal, you could argue that developers wanted to change speed of certain messages, that's why they programmed it like that, and that would technically count as unused content, uh, but all the values are the same. Whether this even counts at all is your choice. This game has a surprising amount of debug-related stuff, like some unused menus. This one is supposed to be level select, but, but the text is missing, leaving the placeholder missing lock string, which is probably short of missing localization string or missing localized string. Despite its short length, it's a very powerful message. I could probably put next to a picture of Abraham Lincoln or Martin Luther King Jr., and nobody would bat an eye. The other menu is for some general debugging shenanigans. You might recognize the non-missing text. Some debug displays can be re-enabled, one for catching a ghost and one for driver information. There's also something known as Smiler, which is benign despite its somewhat creepy name. It exists to judge game performance, getting angry when the game's frame rate isn't up to snuff. This actually isn't Smiler's debut. He first appeared in different game development and civil games, and also with somewhat sizable amount of debug-related content, Super Mario Strikers. See? There he is! There were also more general debugging shenanigans, like used test levels, which loads a glitch tile screen and apparently live in the background when enabled. Then it probably crashes. There's Smoke Test, the debug mission I mentioned earlier. It's... weird? It requires the feature Skip Run-In to be enabled to, presumably, skip a mission's opening dialogue. It also requires Smoke Test duration to be set to a non-zero value, otherwise it crashes. 
A different debug feature is also used. Custom level. It can be set from Mansion A to Mansion E, but always load the gloomy manner. Unsurprisingly, smoke tests last the duration specified smoke test duration. During the so-called smoke test, Luigi gets teleported randomly around the gloomy manor because it's... testing performance or something? I don't really know. There are two more skip front ends, skip front end level and skip front end mission, both of which require skip front end to be enabled. Skip front end level allows you to choose what level to load into, pretty self-explanatory, and skip front mission allows you to choose what mission to load into. In this context, level and mission are different, but I've been using them interchangeably so far, and will continue to do so. When skip running into the mission Stop the Nightmare, if King Boo hack is enabled, it skips the Possessor fight and goes directly to King Boo. The feature always lock all missions, does exactly what you think it does, and boot language overrides the current language settings for a different one. Additionally, all of these debug features don't seem to do anything. Dark Moon also has quite a few unused cutscenes, such as this one. The associate area is supposed to play in is missing, so the map of Evershade Valley is being used. Still, given its sweeping, unrefined movements, it's probably a test cutscene. This particular cutscene, if I didn't include you in, is a test cutscene. <laughs> Accidentally wrote a uh, text cutscene in my script, but it's still pretty true. It starts off with an unused Gus upgrade sequence, which is pretty cool. I should need to tell you how this was supposed to be used. This exact same sequence by itself also exists under the name Poltergust Upgrade, so I'm not going to show it to you again. The cutscene then goes through each of Egot's bunker related animations, then each of Luigi's bunker related animations, pelting us with unspecified dialogue the entire time. This lasts a couple minutes, and I'm pretty sure none of them are unused, so I'm just going to cut it out. The end of the sequence, though, is much more interesting, showing Egot setting up and pouring something. Then getting sick or something, doing various actions. Holding something, drinking it, getting really excited. And then... Whatever this is. The next one shows Luigi pixelating in, you guys supposedly saying several things, and then shows that the haunted tower has been unlocked. This one, Pixelate the Bunker Fail Days, could really be for anything. The original uploader theorizes that it could be for pixelating back into the bunker after failing a mission, and well, that makes sense. <laughs> As for the one after that, well, I'm taking the one on the fact it's unused. It doesn't really look like it, but I guess it is. Gen Pixel in E02 is an unfinished generic pixel editing animation, which is basically exactly what it says on the tin. Ghost Chaser Reveal is the cutscene of discovering Pultipup in the Gloomy Manor. The Gloomy Manor doesn't have a Pultipup mission though, which I'm not really complaining about. Mission 4 Complete is a unique animation for Clay Mission A4. The spiders in the background could be from shattering Mission A5. At the end, the movie gets such a pixelated camera instead of being pixelated, which is funny, but also kind of weird. Ghost Babam Reveal is a pretty weird cutscene. 
It starts with the early door unlocking animation, complete with a sound effect, and then seems perfectly content with showing us the fourth wall. The animation is obviously unfinished, and because the gate had to be unlocked, this is obviously the first mission. So I'm a little confused as to why they'd be introducing bombs so early. B1 Graveyard Peak shows a relatively unanimated Boo is carrying Key like painting to the crypt. For one thing, a toad painting is found there in the final, and two, Luigi can't even enter this room in the first Haunted Towers mission. Huh. M2C Lab Retreat is an unfinished cutscene for one of the hiders holding one of the pinwheel gate veins. In case you don't remember, the ceiling laboratory is where you shoot the mouse for the gem. Apparently, the developers originally intended for you to shoot the mouse for the vein instead. Or maybe you could come back in a later mission and do the same thing for the gem. Who knows? Courtyard Bully has some cool camera angles, and that's really all that it has. It's hard to say what it'd be used for, but I'd say it's the early version of B3, where instead of fighting some ghosts and they fix the pinwheel gate, you'd fix the pinwheel gate, try to enter it, and the game would stop you, because it just loves to do that. Ghost Chaser Reveal. Again. For some reason, Treacherous Mansion has early cutscene in for the Haunted Towers. Go figure. Teleport generic exterior is made specifically for the old clockworks, and I feel like I don't need to explain much more than that. Warehouse Bully seems to be a cutscene for covering that one slammer hidden in the sand, but let's be honest here, it really doesn't need a cutscene. Luigi falls out with early key collect animation, and then ends with Luigi falling down a trap door, at least I think so. The most similar thing in the final game was the cutscene where Luigi falls down a trap door early in C2. There are some similarities, such as being the only trap door in the game, and you're going to see Luigi presumably falling down a chute, because we're going to see Luigi getting the underground section in the final game, he's falling down a chute there as well. But it seems the context here is completely different, not to mention the snowflake Luigi collects, which I'm guessing is an unused model. D2 picks slice in is the early animation for just that. The final animation is much worse being something completely different, that is, a generic copy of a gloomy manor one. An uneasy music track associated with this cutscene, but we'll get to that. This cutscene is quite similar to the one used in D3, the one with Luigi shivers. I wonder what the relationship between them is. Pixel lives in the Mansion E Entrance Hall is animation for the Treacherous Mansion. It might be worth mentioning there isn't a room in the Treacherous Mansion called the Entrance Hall. However, the front entrance, the next closest thing, does have a pixel at a camera. And that covers just about everything. Everything except for one thing. So go ahead and tap your screen or move your mouse or whatever. You see how much time is left in the video? It's all reserved for this game's unused music. But there is a small catch. Dark Moon doesn't actually have a whole lot. The real meat and potatoes are hidden away in Luigi's Mansion Arcade. Yeah! This thing. I don't know why the arcade game would have so much more music than the original game. Well, I guess the answer's pretty obvious. That or either Chad York keeping himself pretty busy. Now, well, we just mentioned arcade's own game with its own unused content. It's pretty boring. So I really don't need to be talking about it. But everyone else lumps two together we're talking about the unused music, and it's pretty hard to try and separate the two, so I guess I'll do the same thing because I care about you.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, my, look at the time. The video's almost over. I guess I better make my goodbyes and my thanks for watching is quick. I guess I kind of already said them.